This is the Devo Knives Growler prototype. Now this prototype was made by Shield and Knives. They had prototypes made uh, by Kubi Knives and by Shield and, and uh, I had a chance to um, get my hands on this Shield and prototype. Uh, Colin Maison Pierre, one half of Devo Knives, uh, sent this to me. Thank you so much, uh, Colin. I really appreciate it. Uh, Devo Knives is the uh, effort of Kevin Johnson. That's Kev from Lefty EDC and uh, Colin Maison Pierre of CM Knife Designs. Um, Colin had a number of knives uh, in production uh, with Tucson and uh, and others, two two other companies, and um, was uh, getting knives reviewed by Lefty. And uh, they struck up a friendship over their um, common taste in knives. And Devo Knives was born. Uh, the Stout was their first one. You've seen that on this channel. And uh, you've seen it out in the wild. I believe their, um, their pre-order for the Stout is just now uh, soon delivering. And uh, as that happens, they have a couple of other prototypes in the works. So there's this one, and then there's another one. <laughs> and I haven't gotten my hands on the other one, though I did see it at Blade Show and got to handle it there. Um, <clears throat> the cool thing about seeing uh, two different prototypes from the Growler is that um, Colin sent the same design file to two different companies. Uh, in this case, it was Shielden and Kubi, I believe, or Shielden and QSP. Ah, now I can't remember, but... Um, they produced two pretty different knives. Uh, I remember being at the booth, the Devo Knives table at Blade Show, and noting the the you know obvious similarity between this and the other prototype, but also the the glaring differences, um, primarily in the thickness. I remember the other one uh, feeling much thicker, and and I asked how could the same design generate a much thicker knife and. I think the short answer is uh, lost in translation or something like that. Um, but so this knife, what is this? This is a very broad, uh, very thinly ground. Um, I'm calling it a drop point. I'm calling it a bellied, I mean, not a drop point, a clip point. This looks like a clip point to me, uh, but it doesn't matter what the characterization is. It is meant to be sort of the opposite of what the stout was. The stout was a very stout, or is a very stout uh, titanium bolster lock with uh, micarta handle scales and a very uh, uh, robust sheep's foot blade in a very robust and, uh, um, well, premium package. This, the aim of this knife was to, to make a really, really excellent work knife that could slice all day long, be ergonomic and comfortable, but also stylish and cool at a much lower price point than the Stout. I think they want this one to come in right around a hundred bucks. The Stout was a $270 knife, something like that on the pre-order or a $300 knife, something like that. Um, so the aim is to go for, um, to draw upon their, their common design, um, you know, desires and uh, things they like in knives. Uh, but to put it at a much uh, lower price point in a working knife. And that's what they got here. And I really, um, man, Shield and Knives is very impressive. I've had a few Shield here. We've given a few away uh, to gentlemen junkies and such. And um, the knives that they build uh, under their own shingle are very nice, very uh, well done and sturdy. Uh, but man, this OEM stuff, I had no idea. And I don't know, maybe this is a new lane for them, but uh, I think it's a good one. So in talking with Colin, you're going to see uh, Colin on uh, the podcast. I had uh, Kevin, uh, Lefty EDC, on a few months back, and I have Colin on. Uh, he'll be on very shortly if he's not on already. And we talk about this knife a lot. And um, there are a couple of things they're going to do uh, as they take this from prototype to production. And um, um, 
he's pretty sure they're going to go with 14C28N blade steel, which a lot of people are happy about. Uh, I like 14C28N. Swedish steel, Sandvik steel, um, high-end ingot steel, I guess. Um, but they're not going to have this cool sort of uh, machine satin. I think it's pretty impressive looking. I've actually really liked it. Uh, though, if I'm to get this knife in the future, I will get it. I will, I will be happy that it's not offered in this. It will be in either a um, stonewashed or a black tumbled finish. You get the micarta here. Um, this is a canvas micarta. You have inset liners in there. Can you see them? It's very hard to see. There are no like weight relief holes or anything in the liners to to uh, make them pop out. Uh, you got a backspacer here. What is this? This looks like G10, this backspacer. And then you have a nice deep set pocket clip and a milled little pocket over there for righties with the flat screw heads, of course, of course. And I like how this is deep carry. It's loop over and it's deep carry, but it's not to the very top. There's a little bit to grab onto. <clears throat> aluminum pivot collar. It looks, it looks aluminum. Oh, I don't know if you just heard my stomach, but if you did, excuse it, please. And really outstanding action. Really, really good action. Uh, you've got this big opening vent here. Um, I got to say that this to me is a little big. Uh, this to me is just, you can just put the fattier thumb in there and it explodes out. It's a little different. Like uh, when I when I do a, a spidey flick on a spidey hole, I usually use my fingernail, but this one doesn't, this one just wants the uh, fat of my thumb. Very nice action, super smooth. Shield and knives, knows what they're doing. Uh, I like that this knife has a point, that this blade has a point and a serviceable point. Um, yeah, I look at this and I don't necessarily think stabbing or thrusting. I think of all of that belly and all of that tall, thin grind and how nicely this would slice and slash. Uh, but I also think it would make a pretty good penetrator too. It comes to a pretty acute triangle there. Ergonomics are great. You look at it, it's a pretty neutral handle. I mean, if you needed to do a goofy grip like this with a reverse chest pull or whatever, or or you wanted to hold it this way, this would be a weird way to hold this knife in particular, but say you had a defensive uh, need or any any handhold you can come up with is, is very sound and ergonomic. But as you might expect, this saber grip is most outstanding, as is this choked up, uh, say, Filipino grip. Well, this sort of choked up grip with the with the thumb on the back. That, man, that feels great. That feels great. And you can also um, get access to that tip because the tip is just about at the center of the, of the knife, right down the center line. So you kind of uh, can always tell where the tip is going to be. And that also presents the tip easily for utility cutting and that kind of thing. Um, but really, the star of the show on this blade is that belly. That belly is tremendous. <coughs> I look forward to seeing it in a tumbled finish and also in that dark wash finish. Look at that. That is a cool looking blade. I like that, that foreshortened view because you can get a real sense of the shape. That Bowie, I, I think it's kind of a Bowie shape, but maybe that's just uh, when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail, or maybe when you have a taste for Bowie knives. Uh, but to me, that's sort of a clip point. Anyway, uh, no need to have to categorize, but again, the handle, very ergonomic, very nice. You got, uh, it's easy to get to that lock bar, no problem at all, uh, either with your thumb or forefinger or what have you. Very easy to get to the lock. Tiny little uh, uncommitted lanyard hole. So I say make it bigger or eliminate it because uh, I do like a lanyard or a fob of 550 cord or leather and it would be a pain in the tuchus to get uh, either of those materials through that tiny little slot. So I say get rid of it or enhance it. 
Um, I do know that they're going to do a nice chamfer on the sides. Right now, as it is, it's comfortable. It doesn't feel sharp. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with the width or the height, I guess, the height of that handle. Whoops. Um, it's thin, but because it's so high, it's thin and kind of squared off at the shoulders, but because it's kind of tall, it feels really good in hand. Uh, but they are going to take a little bit off the corners and soften it a little with some chamfering. Um, but aside from that and... Uh, you'll have to listen to the podcast to find out what the other what the other fixes or the other changes are going to be. I've forgotten them at this point, but um, such a such a cool knife. Um, yeah, Devo knives. Now I'm not going to compare it to anything because I don't have anything to compare it to. But what I will do is show it with two common size comparison knives, so you get an idea of how big this is. So there it is with the. Paramilitary 2. It looks like, even though it's smaller, it's got the same amount of cutting edge, uh, but uh, in a smaller package. And then here it is with a 3-inch folder. This is the Mini RSK Mark 1. So that's about a 3-inch blade, just, just a little bit smaller than a 3-inch blade. Um, so that gives you an idea of what this uh, growler is going to be. Uh, be like. Now, uh, Devo Knives um, got their name because Kev is a, uh, a detent diva, and so they went with the masculine Devo, and so Devo Knives was born. I love that. Uh, my wife sometimes calls me a Devo, and so that rings true with me. Uh, I, it's really nice to see these two guys coming together. They're, they're both really awesome uh, guys and, and have big time love for knives and um, want to make the knife world a better place. I'm happy to see them teaming up and doing this cool stuff. Their uh, naming convention thus far is beer oriented. The first one was the stout. This one is the growler. And I think the next one is the mash. Is that right? Uh, they have another prototype that I'd love to check out that's more long and slender and worn cliffy and uh, also looks right up my alley, but I think that's called the mash or something else beer-ish, beer related. All right, so this is the Devo Knives Growler prototype made by Shielden Knives. Shielden will be the OEM on this project, and uh, I really look forward to seeing this come to light. Uh, thanks to Kev and Colin, thank you so much, uh, both of you for coming on my show, but also for being so generous and loaning these awesome prototypes out. All right, take care.